With 100,000 lakes, but a population of less than 1.2 million, Saskatchewan is a perfect spot for a relaxing boating adventure. I mean, 12 people per lake is a pretty impressive ratio. To maximize your enjoyment, you never want to leave the water. And that's where houseboating comes in. We flew into Regina, the capital city, and hit the road, driving four hours almost due north through the flat farmlands of the prairies and up to the town of Nipawin on the shores of Tobin Lake. Here, our local hosts, Curtis and Teresa, the owners of Aurora Houseboats, got us set up on one of the big boys, a 12 sleeper. Fits in you and all your guests with multiple bedrooms and a pull-out sofa in the main living area. The head is no cramped boat layout, but a proper bathroom with a full-size shower. The kitchen, too, is more house than boat. You need to bring your own food, but they have the pots and pans and plates. And there are massive windows everywhere, including the sliding glass doors at the front, which lead out to the barbecue. Up top, there's a big open deck and a hot tub. Off the back is the ever-important slide. All these boats are originally from Shoe Swap in BC and have been retrofitted to have outboards for easier maintenance and increased storage. Something I've heard a lot of people say about houseboating is that it looks like fun, but it's just too intimidating because even though they've boated a lot, this is a huge watercraft and you're on foreign waters. You don't know where the safe water is. You don't know how to handle something like this. But the beauty of the way Curtis has it set up is that it takes all the guesswork out. So with the low rants right here, he's put in waypoints all the way along. And all you gotta do is just thread the needle, connect the dots, takes all the guesswork out. And actually because of the outboard, we just prop the back door open. I can see the motor, which when you're running doesn't matter, but when you're casting off, you know exactly where you're pointed. Having all these windows around you, you feel like you're in total control. You don't feel like you're just pointing a big barge and hoping. Normally, you'd be exploring on your own, but we wanted a chase boat for our cameraman, so we towed Curtis's sea and he rode along with us until we were ready for the shots. And he doubled as tour guide. You see the eagle? Oh, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> There's a lot of eagles. Friends of ours took a picture of a lynx swimming across out here. They were taking a picture, and it started scratching the side of their motor, and it's like, ooh, that's too close. <laughs> we had about a two-hour run from the dock to the beach, and when we rounded one of the bends of the long, meandering lake, I was happy we weren't going any faster because I had to navigate a traffic jam. And this has got to be the fishing hotspot because there are a half dozen boats in sight and there's even marked fish on here. So this might be where the record was caught. Cruising through on a big houseboat has to be good luck. Beaching a houseboat goes against a lot of instincts. First and foremost is running aground. Neutral. Perfect. And then you have a current to contend with, so you got to keep the motor running while you tie up. Might have to put it back in gear because the back end's starting to go out on you. If the wind blows that way, the rope's going to hold it. Same thing this way. We've never had one pull out. We've been using these for 15 years, I bet. I think the bachelor parties do the, like, run in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. When you're tied up, it's best to raise the motor, just in case you're the first ever to drift off. You don't want that prop banging into anything. So now this is home. Love it. Fish off the back, jump off the back. Always wanted waterfront property. I'll maybe get some water in that hot tub, get it heating. So I'll start the generator. It only takes about 15 minutes to fill it, 35, 40 minutes to heat it up to 100 degrees. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. 12 hours ago, I was sitting in the busy terminal at Pearson International Airport in Toronto. Now, I'm listening to the lapping water of Tobin Lake without a soul to be seen. Not a bad way to end the day. The next morning, we're up at first light because we wanted to try our hand at some Saskatchewan fishing. Tobin Lake is home to a few provincial records and also the ice fishing world record for walleye. Not content to fish off the back of the houseboat, 
Curtis returned with his 2003 Ranger Fisherman VS. Curtis is also a fishing guide, so I felt confident we'd get something. What are we fishing for here? Uh, we're looking for a walleye this morning. All right. A dual console layout, there were three seats, including one that was set up in the bow seat mount, though it could be moved aft. Everything about this boat is fish first, with multiple dry storage compartments in the bow and a massive rod locker in the walkthrough between the consoles. Outfitted for virtually any condition, this Ranger was kitted out with a Minn Kota trolling motor at the bow, a Minn Kota Vantage transom mount, a 15 horsepower Mercury kicker. The electronics are equally as thorough, with a low Lowrance LC-X19 at the helm and a Humminbird 798 CI HD at the transom. All that's missing are power poles to have every box checked. And a 225 horsepower Mercury Optimax, the max speed we reached was 50 miles per hour. Though that, of course, is with all the compartments full of gear and a full tank of gas. Still, plenty fast enough to rip around the lake should your current fishing hole dry up. We were able to haul in a few walleye to keep and I even brought an 18 pound, 10 ounce Northern Pike on board. With the wide open layout of the 620 VS, I was able to follow it around and avoid snagging the line. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> and get it on board for the requisite photographic proof. 1810. Not a bad haul considering I'm fishing for walleye here. A successful fishing day for sure. And when Curtis dropped me off back at the boat, he said he'd be back with a surprise. Now, I had talked to my brother, Mike, who is a pilot in the Royal Canadian Air Force, and he's currently stationed in Manitoba as an instructor. We had planned on him visiting since we're rarely this close together anymore, so I kept my eyes peeled for the boat to return. But Curtis had something else in mind. A pilot himself, the two of them got in Curtis's float plane and made one heck of an entrance. Once Mike settled in, Curtis offered to take me for a flight, which was doubly cool to see the rest of the lake from the air, and because this was my first ever float plane ride. We capped off the night with some fishing at dusk off the back of the houseboat, waiting for it to be dark to see if the company name was accurate. And even though it didn't show up on our video cameras, once the sun set over the tall pines atop the cliffs, I got proof on my DSLR that yes, Aurora is an appropriate name. I can totally see how people get hooked on this and why the sport has blown up. Aurora Houseboats is based within Nipawin Regional Park and it's a family-friendly kind of spot covering 296 acres with cabin rentals and seasonal campsites, mini putt, a splash pad, a small farm with goats and rabbits and chickens, and a playground for kids uh, of all ages. We get a variety and that's what makes it fun for us because you get to meet a variety of people. I shouldn't be biased, but families are our most favorite to host and there's either grown children or young children, but they're making memories together. And as a young person, those are some of my best memories, is houseboating with my family. So it's just nice to see that they are also having the same fun experiences. As a father with a young child, I can see why this is a great family vacation. You're forced to be together, but there's so much to do and it's a fun adventure to share, so you're not locked away and bored. Before we headed back to our houseboat, I heard that Curtis's brother had a Malibu surf boat and wanted to come out to the beach, but he was stuck at work. So we hooked up our loaner truck and headed down to the ramp with it. A sort of mutiny on the Malibu situation. Now I've launched a lot of boats and was doing what I had done many times before. So it seemed odd when someone flagged me down. We're here in the parking lot and I was about to line it up to launch it. Grant Bastido with Ford of Canada has a cabin on this lake, and he said, are you using the backup assist feature on the Raptor? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, Grant's gonna explain it. What, do we, what, what are you talking about, Grant? Well, it's a super cool new technology um, that allows you to back up a trailer basic, basically hands-free. 
So it'll back you up straight as an arrow without you ever touching the steering wheel. All you have to do is work the brake and the uh, gas pedal and back you straight in. You have to do a few measurements to get your specific trailer set up, but once it's done, it's saved. And you can use this anytime you hook up. Yeah, now I'm lined up right with the ramp. I'm trailering in the future. <laughs> it's awesome. Back at our houseboat, we found we had neighbors. The Warlow family has been coming here for 15 years and are actually good friends of Curtis and Teresa. It is a busy lake, but it's a big lake, so there's lots of room. I mean, you get out uh, off of the river system, you get onto the lake, and there's lots of space. And we love to fish. Fishing is phenomenal here. Now we enjoy the beach time with the kids and spend a lot of time out here at this particular beach right here. We let them have their family fun, and I, meanwhile, got goaded into trying something new, wake surfing. Curtis's brother, Kevin, kicked it off to show me how it's done. And to be honest, to make sure we had footage of someone surfing if I couldn't get up. Now I know when you look at me, you think natural athlete and intensely flexible and super toned, right? Well, I hope you're sitting down, folks. That is not quite the case. So I was a little nervous about giving this dad bod a test on something I've never done before, all while the cameras were rolling. Luckily, I had wakeboarded back in the day and getting up was pretty similar. The rest was balance. Still, this was different, but a lot of fun. I can totally see how people get hooked on this and why the sport has blown up. Gonna go again? I also had the bonus of having Coach Kevin talk me through it, but that's part of the fun. It's a social activity, and the more I did it, the better I got. Tons of fun, low impact, so when you bail, and as a newbie, you will. It doesn't hurt, and yet it's still a decent exercise. Curtis's sister-in-law, Shelly, made sure to knock us all down a peg before we called it a day. Sunset surfing and Saskatchewan go together like combines and overused prairie references. What a beauty way to end the day. So close.